So hello guys, welcome back to Get to My YouTube channel once again. I hope you all are doing well and working good. It's been a very long time since I have come back to the channel and uploaded the stuff on technical domains like I used to do earlier. And that's again because of my office work, personal work, and also and the new type of strategies and content planning which I am coming up. You can see the workspace behind me. So that's the new workspace which I have set up for making the videos more appealing and attractive, better picture quality and better voice quality, which many people have reported earlier to me. And also the most important is new type of content. From now on, on my channel, you will be able to see embedded hardware development and embedded software development content both. One of my very close friends, Siddharth Rao, in this video is from this video, going to teach you all about the embedded hardware development PCB designing tutorials on KiCad software from the scratch. And on the embedded software side, I would be continuing with the new type of content on new microcontroller and sensors and module interfacing and many such stuff. And the, and the most important thing at which my time has been devoted in prior months is the get to bike website. On the get to bike website, I'm trying to create a community, a blogging platform where people can get to know about new technologies and skills learn to those technologies or to make career on those technologies like microcontroller coding, IoT, sensors and module interfacing, different automotive, in the different industries like automotive, industrial automation, making DIV projects on these industrial projects and so and so forth. So on the website, you can see there are proper microcontroller coding tutorial series on different microcontroller vendors like NXP, TI, STM, Silicon Labs, and so and so forth and different sensors and module interfacing like of different input output sensors electrical sensors iot sensors and proper section on rtos real-time operating systems and many such new interesting topics and technologies so don't forget to share and uh, have a view on get to my website and it would is very much beneficial for all those people who are into the core technical field and want to make a career into a core embedded systems student hobbyist and so so it's a highly recommended for all of you and do refer it and now coming back to the video from now on this video siddharth will be taking up the video and proper tutorial series would be having on embedded hardware development pcb designing on keycat software so now without wasting time let's get started Hey guys, I'm Siddhanth Rao from Get2Byte and you have seen a lot of stuff on Get2Byte channel related to firmware development, working with different microcontrollers, um, you know, making device drivers, stuff like that. So uh, today we'll be diving into something different. So moving away a little bit from programming and software, we'll be working on hardware. So the purpose of this whole series of videos that you're going to see in the upcoming weeks is to teach you how to do PCB design. Um, so first off, I'd like to tell you why you need PCB design and at what point would a pro would your project really require something like PCB design. So when your project starts look looking like this, when your wiring is a mess, I I'd suggest at that point you should consider PCB design. So say for example, you have a project which is just, you know, say a small, um, you know, four wheeled vehicle, something like that, where you're controlling a cer uh, certain motors based on certain inputs. At that point, it really is quite simple. You don't have many things going on. Uh, say you have a certain module for a certain purpose, you have a motor driver, you have the connections to your motors. At that point, you really wouldn't require something like PCB design. But say, for example, I was to create a wristwatch with the uh, stuff that's available online you cannot miniaturize those uh, modules enough to actually fit inside say a smartwatch. So if I want to do something like that, or say for example, I am looking to make something very particular and where I'd say uh, the size of my design really matters, where I want to say build it very small, then I would consider something like PCB design. 
Not just that, when you start working with things which are relatively more complex, when you have ICs for which say, for example, there are no modules available. So generally speaking, when you say learn something in uh, related to microcontrollers or, you know, interfacing with microcontrollers or even other things related to computers, what you generally do is you'll have a certain module, say for example, a Bluetooth module, you know, maybe a motor driver, maybe a RTC modules, anything. So any time you interface a sensor or something like that, there is a module available for that. But many times it happens, you want to do something, but there is no module available for that. So at that point, you know, you might have the IC available online, the circuit itself, that's the integrated circuit you can buy, but there is no module for that IC. So at that point, you might also want to consider PCB design. So uh, you might say, for example, make something as simple as a motor driver. This is a standard L293D motor driver shield that you might have seen or that people use on Arduinos. You might be, say, for example, interested in making a module. So this one you see is a, a flash chip by Windborn. Uh, the purpose of say, you know, maybe making a module, even if it's available, might also be that there are some pins on the IC itself, which you want to access, but the module itself doesn't allow you to access them. So if you see this chip, there are total eight pins of which you don't get all of them. Actually two to three pins are not available on the module itself. So you might say just buy this IC, build a PCB around it such that you can access all the pins and then use the whole IC to its full extent. You might also say, for example, want to design a converter, a buck converter, for example, that you can see here, maybe a boost converter. So th these are devices which say step down power or step up power. So uh, maybe it's not uh, in the right, it's not the right size for you. There, there can be a million reasons why you would consider PCB design. And say, for example, I have a microcontroller available, like say the ESP32. I want to build a whole board around it, but I want everything included related to my project on it to actually miniaturize it. So that's also where you can consider PCB design. You would actually be able to make uh, custom boards for microcontroller. As you, are, you might have seen on Getobytes website and online uh, on Getobytes platform, that there are some uh, PCBs, uh, there are some devices which we have made for actually working on automotive devices. So there are some NXP uh, microcontrollers for which we have made custom boards so that you would be able to actually learn how to use them. And they're actually cheaper than the ones available online. So uh, you might also say, for example, want to build something as complex as a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you know, maybe you want to say uh, run uh, run a microprocessor, which is very powerful. Then also you would require something like PCB design if you have very specific requirements for your project. So uh, what you can see here is it's a shield that I built uh, back in the day where there are, there are two uh, stepper motor drivers and there are some connections to the Raspberry Pi itself. And you also, also have an input for uh, an, an external IPO battery. So this was very useful when we had to actually uh, miniaturize everything and we wanted to keep, keep it really compact. Not just that, it was a wiring mess. So when we used to just wire it on a breadboard, it was not all that reliable. Many times we would not be able to debug was it a wiring issue or was it something else. So it was quite useful. And say for example, you want to you know uh, do some prototyping for a bigger project you want to work on. So you can literally say, make your own uh, PCB for that. So there are many things you can do. And uh, I, th that is why this whole vi video series uh, is going to be available to you on Getobytes YouTube channel. So first off, what we'll be doing today is be, we'll be going through some, uh, we will be going through some uh, software that are, softwares that are available online for uh, PCB design. And then I'll tell you why we are choosing to work on KeyCAD and we'll be installing it today itself. So first off, uh, if you go online and try to find out which, uh, you know, uh, PCB design softwares are available, first you would say, probably find out is say, uh, Altium Designer, uh, EZDA, KeyCAD, OrCAD, uh, Eagle, 
uh, some people also you know use some other softwares so uh, there are many softwares available for the same purpose but uh, you know softwares like say altium and eagle they are paid softwares where you have to pay some money to actually use them and many times you know people say for example a lot of the audience base of get to buy it is actually people who are you know maybe college students maybe people in school who are interested in working on microcontrollers or say designing their own stuff so uh, it's not always possible to actually pay that uh, money to be able to use the software so that's why we'll be working on keycard keycard is a open source software uh, that's available for pcb design so if you just google keycard you'll find out this website where they have uh, the documentation available and you can download it as well so to actually install it you have to just first uh, click download then uh, whatever device you're using just click on that and uh, after that there are multiple sources from where you can download it uh, during the download uh, during the installation process you will have an option to choose uh, to download freecad or not FreeCAD is a 3D software using which you can actually make your um, 3D models for certain uh, components. Say for example, I have a screw terminal and I say for example, don't have a 3D component available for that. So I cannot visualize that component in my PCB. Then you might want to use something like FreeCAD. But if you don't need something like that, you can completely skip that part and just install KeyCAD. So once you're done with KeyCAD, you can just uh, open it up and here you'll see a bunch of things here actually I have a project opened up but uh, this is the uh, page you'll see one if you have installed keycard properly and in the next few videos we'll be going through uh, f first uh, the different parts of keycard like say the schematic editor symbol editor PCB editor footprint editor Gerber viewer uh, even calculation tools these things are very useful and uh, you would uh, understand the whole process of how a PCB is made. So I'll be waiting for you in the next video and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.